Let's look at a scenario where we can pass parameters from our survey over through into a survey invitation and then when someone responds to that survey and fills it out we pass the parameters back through. What this will allow us to do is send data kind of included within that one specific survey invitation that then travels through back with the responses that we can then use to look up and update records that that survey is linked to. So let's go through and I'll explain what I mean and how we can do this. All right, so we've got a basic survey here. Um, this is for an appointment. So if there's an appointment that co is coming up, we want to send an email to the customer, send them uh, a, an email with a link to a survey that they complete. And we're basically saying, following appointments been scheduled for you. Here's the subject, the date and time and the details. And then can you confirm if you're able to attend the appointment or if you need to reschedule? Then depending on what they say, um, the two options are confirmed and reschedule requested. Um, these two fields are going to be hidden unless someone says reschedule requested, in which case then do you have a date preference and also any additional comments you wish to provide. So in order to be able to do that, we've got these uh, parameters set up. So if I click over here on the ellipsis and go to personalize, what we've got is some piping variables. We've got the first name and last name. They are by default set up for any of the surveys. And then what I've done is I've created one for date, subject, description, and then also I've called one appointment ID. Then what I've got is on the survey itself, I'm using those variables to show Megan, the following appointment has been scheduled for you, and then to display the subject, the date, and the description. All right, so fairly straightforward. Now if we go over into flow, what we've got is the flow for the appointment reminder. So if I go ahead and edit this, we're going to run this on a regular occurrence. We're going to run this every day so we can put in the, the time that it's going to start. We can put t time zones, all of that sort of stuff. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the appointments that match specific criteria. And for that, I'm basically looking for any appointments where this, um, the status reason or the status code equals scheduled. OK, so that's the status that I've got in my specific CDS environment. And then the scheduled start is less than 29 or 30 days from uh, today. So we're basically wanting to send something um, that is coming up in the future in the next within the next 30 days. So we're going to find those appointments. When we do, we're basically then going to um, do something just to make things look a little bit prettier. So if you've ever used any date fields, you'll know that they look a little bit strange. I want to be able to set w what that specific format looks like. So I'm going to use a convert time zone step. I'm going to use the start time of the appointment and I'm going to format it so that it is um, the day of the week and then the month, the day, um, the year, and then whether it's um, the time AM or PM. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the contact from that appointment. So for this scenario, my appointments must have the contact set in the regarding field. So I'm going to get the contact from that appointment that we're running this against. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an invitation to um, for somebody to create this, sorry, for somebody to complete the survey. So we need to generate a link for somebody. And for that, what I'm going to do is get the email address from the get contact step above. I'm going to get the, their first name, their last name. I'm going to set this invitation regarding that contact and also set the recipient details um, for that contact as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, reform or take the reformatted uh, date for the appointment that I've used in that step and I'm basically going to put the converted time in the date field that will display on the survey. I'm then going to go ahead and put in the subject of the appointment, I'm going to put in the description and then I'm also going to get, going to get the appointment ID and I'm going to put it into that field. I'm not going to display that on the survey, I'm just using it so that I can pass it through um, through the survey and then I'll be going to be able to grab it later on which we'll see shortly. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send this the email and I'm asking the person to confirm the appointment using their first name and then that invitation link I'm setting this up as a hyperlink. So for this specific step I'm using is HTML yes 
and I'm doing a href equals and then quotes and I'm putting that invitation link in between there. So this will be on the corresponding blog post on meganvwalker.com if you want more information on how to do that particular part. All right, so that is my first flow. And that flow, like I said, is going to be used to actually send out the email and send a link to take a survey. Now, what's going to happen is when somebody actually responds to the survey, if I have a look here, I've got an Excel spreadsheet where I've exported some survey responses from CDS. Now, what I want to do is show you that there is a field called context context data. Now the context data field, what we're seeing here is we're looking at all of those parameters that are getting passed through from the survey to that invitation and then back when the invitation is, um, when the survey link is clicked on and someone fills it out, we're passing that information back as well. So if you create your survey, fill it out one time and then go and actually export the survey response. This is the field that you want to get and you're just basically going to use this in just a moment. We're going to do this and pass out our specific appointment ID. So just wanted to show you what's actually happening in CDS when someone fills out the survey. We'll come back to that in just a moment. All right, now on to our second flow. This flow will be kicked off when a survey response is created. So that is our first step. When a survey response is created, we're going to get the response details from the appointment confirmation ID. No, sorry, from the appointment confirmation form. All right, so then what we're going to do is we are going to convert the response ID from that survey and we're going to use the trigger body um, expression to basically get that and convert it into an integer. Now here's the part where we are going to take that context data that we just saw in that Excel spreadsheet. You will be able to click on the um, use sample pay payload to generate schema. You'll be able to copy that entire um, piece from the context data from any one of them. And then what you'll be able to do is just paste it in and click done and then it will show up and it will basically pull through all of those parameters so we can see the date, the subject, the description, appointment ID, first name and last name. That's fantastic. All right, so then what we're going to do is we are going to check the response from the survey. So on my survey, I had the first question um, basically asking if somebody's confirming the appointment or not. So if that question is equal to confirmed, we're going to go down the yes route. If not, then it must be rescheduled. We're going to go down the no route. So all I'm going to do is do an update a record step and I'm going to use the record identifier. I'm going to look in my past JSON action and there we can see all of those different values that have been um, pulled out of that. And I'm going to use the appointment ID as my record identifier. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the um, status reason value and I'm going to set it to say make this confirmed. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go and look at the no steps and I'm going to say if it's rescheduled, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the record identifier and then I'm going to set that uh, value to be reschedule. Then what I need to do is I want to create a task to tell somebody, hey, you're going to need to reschedule this with the customer. So I'm going to get the contact from that, um, uh, that appointment regarding field then I'm going to also take the date that they've put in the survey and said that they want to reschedule it for and just do a, a conversion to make the format look the way I want it to. And then finally, I'm going to create a task. I'm going to assign it to the same owner of the um, appointment and I'm just going to fill out a little bit of information in the description. And I'm going to set the due date to be um, five days from now using a format date and time and adding some days to today's date and basically use that as my due date for the task. So that's my two flows. Hopefully that makes sense in terms of the different steps. And now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll force this one to run. Let's go ahead and run the appointment reminder flow. So we've gone ahead and we're running that. So again, as a reminder, what this is doing is it is going ahead and it's finding all of the appointments that meet the criteria. They're all scheduled. Um, they're all scheduled. They all 
uh, have a date that's coming up within the next 30 days. So if we go ahead and we look now, I've got my email. So you've got an appointment coming up. Go ahead and we're going to confirm it. Now, remember what we did is we, in the survey itself, we used parameters to pass and pipe data through. So we've got the first name there showing. We've got the subject of that appointment, the date and time of that appointment, and then the details. So that's basically the description of the appointment. So please confirm if you're able to attend. Confirmed or reschedule. If I pick confirmed, we just submit it. If I do reschedule requested, then we are displaying the date or the calendar control. So I'm going to say, right, I want to reschedule it for next Friday. Um, I can't attend anymore. Can it be next week instead? And then let's go ahead and submit that. So then we've got a thank you that says your response is submitted. Someone from our office will be in touch within 24 hours to confirm your new appointment date and time. That's great. So now what should have happened is this flow. Yep. So that just ran and it succeeded. So we can see it went through um, and it checked and said, OK, the response from the survey, it's false, meaning it's not confirmed. So therefore it must have been to select to reschedule. So we set the appointment to rescheduled, we got the contact, we changed the, the date um, formatting and then we created a task. So if I now go into my appointments, we can see that this appointment here is rescheduled uh, or rescheduled. That's the, um, the status reason. And if I now go into the tasks, I've got a new task, appointment needs rescheduling. And I've got some information within the description and the due date is five days from today. So this is just one example of how you can use those parameters to pass through when you actually send out the survey invitation and then pass back into CDS when someone fills that out so that you can then use those parameters to then update other records, create new records and so on. So hopefully you can see the value in this. Um, if you've got any questions or thoughts, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.